Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to Mind for Combat. If you're new to the platform, my name is Rohan, and this is my platform where I do fight sports related content. If you're new here, why don't you help me grow my platform? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you don't, and maybe hit that bell icon to get notified every time I upload a video. With that said, I thought I'll try something a bit different. Obviously the world of fighting is quiet. I'm, I'm locked in at home with my wife. We're staying safe and I've been speaking to her a lot about MMA. Unfortunately for her, She's the only person I can speak to MMA outside of you guys right now. So I thought, why not get her on, have a little discussion with her, introduce you guys to my wife for the first time. So guys, this is Rifat. Rifat, you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. Just want to say a big thanks uh, to, for supporting Rohan's channel. You're all such great guys. I'm always reading the comments and it's, it's amazing to see the engagement and how supportive you all are. Uh, so yeah, just thanks from me. And thank you, Rifat. <laughs> so, um, Rifat, one of the things that has been going on in the world of mixed martial arts, obviously everything with coronavirus has come to a halt. There's nothing going on no more. And that's not just mixed martial arts, that's every sport in uh, attraction around the world. And mixed martial arts come to somewhat of a complete halt, although Dana White was somewhat defiant to the end and he said he wanted to keep it going. Now, you're someone that studied regulation in sport in, in, in your time doing your law degree and everything else that you've done. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like Dana's insistence to carry on with mixed martial arts was correct with what's going on or was it straight up unethical in in regards with everything else that's going on right now i, I do lean towards uh saying that it is probably unethical to even suggest that gatherings like mma fights should even be going ahead given that this is an international emergency uh there are people who you know there are bigger fish to fry right now you know people are can't work they can't feed their families and you know that the response to that from uh, an international level the consensus is that you know isolating yourselves and, and banning gatherings for a short term you know re as a response to that crisis is, is the best measure to take to to limit the spread of infection so i think that's a it's a, 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 a little price to pay Right, no, that's that's very interesting. Now, of course, I don't mean this as a personal attack of Dana White. I'm a huge fan of Dana White and everything that he's done for the sport of mixed martial arts. He's obviously a guy who's very, very uh, outspoken. He's a guy who, when he's got a vision, he goes for it, um, knocking down any wall that stands in his path. And one of the things that's been going on is that there's been a little bit of controversy in the world of mixed martial arts and sporting regulation and um, even bodies and go and supporting bodies sporting bodies um, that, that um, govern the sport of mixed martial arts saying that no, this shouldn't be happening. There's been some TV programmers that are partners with the UFC saying the fight shouldn't be going ahead. I believe what Dana White's trying to do in a lot of ways can be seen as quite noble. He's trying to bring some normality back in people's lives. Of course, he's got a fight promotion and he's got to pay fighters. So he needs to give these guys a way to make a living. That's of course the other side of the coin and that's taking away any personal incentive he has of keeping the ship running, especially being that his company was just bought recently in business terms for $4 billion. Now, what's interesting is that they've announced a card, a super card in a lot of ways, um, for May 9th. Now, on that card, there's going to be three world championship fights and a lot of high profile contenders fighting. So they're going to be carrying on with it regardless. Now, you're not someone that would um, traditionally stay up, stay and watch mixed martial arts. You're not necessarily a, a huge sporting person. But with that being a huge sporting spectacle that's being put on at a time where there's no real live sports going on, do you think that from a casual perspective, you could see the appeal of sitting down and maybe tuning into something being that there's nothing else going on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, now is a time we're all, you know, we're all isolated. We've got time on our hands, essentially. So uh, I guess now is a good time to to pick up anything, you know, kind of new and, and tease out anything yeah. kind of something that you wouldn't ordinarily do. So yeah. I would quite happily, you know, sit down and, and watch a fight. Um, just to kind of go back on what you were saying about Dana White and, and how, you know, essentially how passionate he is. I, I completely understand, you know, when, you, when you've got that vision and you're so focused and, and you really want to go ahead and, and bring that normality, I think. But then again, that same argument could be used right across the board for all the other industries. And I think we've all got to kind of have that, that, emergency hat on that sense of urgency and and put life above everything else and what can we do to preserve that um so whilst i admire his passion i i, I do think that he needed to perhaps see the bigger picture here um and and essentially you know 
I, I don't follow sports that much, so perhaps this may be a slightly ignorant question, but I put I would put to you why why is it that this fight has to go ahead sort of immediately why why can it not be put on the back burner and, and be a card that's you know something that we can look forward to once these measures are lifted so that's a good question i have essentially been an advocate for postponing the fight um, especially the main event in which tony ferguson who's a guy who's a uh, top contender <laughs> the, the most prolific contender there's ever been in the history of any fighting combat sport for the lightweight championship and in my opinion we're living through a time where there's dual championships now let me not get into the technicalities he was meant to be fighting um, Habib Nurmagomedov you of course know who Habib is um, uh, however Habib's taken a somewhat moral stance and said I'm not fighting with all of this going on essentially he, uh, originally he said he can't fight because he was in Russia then there were some talks about him potentially getting a flight booked via Putin and Dana White coming to a deal, forget that. Mm. Someone else has now stepped in and that fight's been made now. So that fight, essentially the big fight that I was hoping would stay together has fallen apart. And now that is potentially the biggest fight in UFC's history that is gonna fall apart if Tony Ferguson's to lose on May 9th, which he may very well lose in this fight. So to answer your question, actually, the fight that the fans wanted to see isn't even being kept together. That's being put apart. And this is just a whole new card being put together with a whole new main event for essentially no reason other than for there to be fights on. Now, don't get me wrong. You know me. I watch every single fight I can possibly watch and I will be watching this fight and I'm excited to have fights on the screen. That doesn't take away from the fact that I wish Tony Ferguson would have refused this fight and just sat out for the bigger opportunity. Which brings me on to the next part of what I wanted to discuss, and that's the skeptic, um, the spectacle of, of mixed martial arts or the sport in, or combat sports in general. So I know with um, when Deontay Wilder was going to be fighting Tyson Fury for the second time, you started to gain a little bit of interest in it and you started to pay a little bit of interest in what was going on, how the fight was going to play out. You started to be somewhat intrigued in what was going on. You even asked me about the results. and So you mm. started to get into the vibe of that now what i'm very interested about was what was it about that fight that appealed to you made you want to watch it and what is it that you don't find in mixed martial arts that makes you a regular what is, what could mixed martial arts do to make you want to watch the big events I, I i think a lot of the 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 S word talk, I'll just say it, is the shit talk beforehand. Right. You know, they give all these wild and wacky claims and you, you, you as a viewer watching it and thinking, oh, really? Okay. You know, I, I want to hold you to this. And I, and when you, it was when you told me that, um, uh, you know, about the Gypsy King, as it were, how he, how no one's ever sort of lost in his family and how he's got, he's got to hold his family reputation together. You know, it, that was the appeal for me. I thought, yeah, this is this is pretty interesting because then you've got his opponent. It's I think it's the sheer belief in these fighters that they are true winners. And what I guess is kind of it's a bit sadistic in a sense, watching it as a viewer trying to you, you you want them you so desperately want that belief to be true but you're also sitting there watching someone's going to lose at the end of this fight someone's going to lose and for me i i wanted to see you know who is it out of these people out of the two of them that are making just as bold claims as you know as they were against each other who was it that was going to be the loser of that night so and, that's, uh, yeah, yeah so I guess for me, it, for, from a psychological perspective, it kind of gripped me. Yeah, yeah. of course. So, uh, of course, Tyson Fury did go on to win that fight and uphold his moniker as the Gypsy King. What's interesting about that, what you just said, is that it's the shit talk that appealed to you. Now, between the hardcores in fight um, in fight sports, especially in MMA, we get kind of annoyed about the shit talk. We we get really put off by it. There's a fighter named Colby Covington who's really become the universal heel in mixed martial arts by the amount of shit he's been talking and he's kind of put a lot of people off. So that's very interesting, the fact that you don't, um, that the fact that it actually appeals to you. That's very, very interesting. I'd like to know what you guys in the comment section think about that. Um, while you're here, there's another thing that I've been wanting to ask you. Okay. What fight would you, if you could put any fight together now from what you know, what, who, which fighters would spring to your mind that you'd want to see them compete? Let's see who the casuals know about. Oh no, you're really testing me. I'm terrible with names. I, I have I have like my own names for mm. <laughs> based on what these people look like. All right, go on. But you know Let's what? Let's go by that name. You know, I've always asked you about, you know, male and females going up against each other. You know, the the talent of some of these people like I've 
uh, from what I've yeah. seen and the, from the way you've talked about them is incredible. And now maybe we're talking way in like 2030 where that becomes a thing. No, that's never going to be a thing. Oh, no, 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 okay. Male and female fighters I should can never only, ever fight. I can only other. hope. I can only hope, eh? <laughs> but um, okay, fair enough. If we're, if we're not saying this, you know, that we're not going to get, we're not going to get that, then... Um, Oh, honestly, you really put me in the spot. What is, 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 is it? Is, Shevchenko don't count. No, um, I, I might. Go, so you talk. I find that your content's been a lot more about the male fighters. So those are the ones that I've, I've heard of. Yeah. I'm gonna go with a random one. Don't know if it's been done before. Maybe Khabib and uh, Tyson Fury. Is that is that a possibility? Is it that... is very much not a possibility. Oh, okay. Why? Well, well, they're I, from I completely love, different. I, I love that you said that because it shows how much for casual you are. Because <laughs> Khabib Nurmagomedov is UFC's lightweight champion. Tyson Fury is a heavyweight boxing uh, world champion. But but they're both so great, and everyone talks <laughs> about them so greatly. You know, so based on that probability, could yeah, we not? Yeah, could I we don't think it will there? work. A six foot nine heavyweight versus a, <laughs> the UFC's lightweight champion. That's 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 interesting. See, that's crazy to me because Deontay Wilder looks, you know, just from my eyes, they don't look like an equal match in that sense. No, Deontay Wilder is very small and got right. a very slim frame compared to Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder, actually, if the world, if he was a smart boxer, he would be cutting down and fighting that cruiserweight anyway. He, he's not a true heavyweight. He's had a lot of success at heavyweight, but he's not a heavyweight. Let me not get into the specifics yeah, of that. Enough. But anyways, um, Rifat, thank you for coming on. Thought I'll have a quick conversation with you guys, share, um, share a conversation with you, share it with you guys, thought I'd try something new out. Guys, let me know if you enjoyed this conversation, me talking to a casual, i.e. my wife, my <laughs> lovely wife in this uh, case and scenario. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Let me know if you want to see more conversations with me and my casual wife. And, uh, <laughs> I'm really not that casual. This yeah. is a lifelong commitment. No, I mean <laughs> casual. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this and... Um, Something different uh, I thought I'd try out. Thank you for watching, guys. As always, I'm Rohan. If you're new to the channel, remember to like, subscribe, share the video out, all that jazz. Thanks for watching. And this is Mindful Combat. Rifak, do you want to say bye? Thanks for bringing me in, guys. Really excited to get your feedback on what you thought of this. Bye.